Kati would be the first to say that this is a celebration of Richard's life, his friends, and his service. It is not the first time that we have celebrated him, nor will it be the last. We will remember him for a long time. Not long ago, when floods were devastating Pakistan, I called him quite early in the day, not realizing it was 1 a.m. local time. I told him that we needed help getting in relief supplies. Immediately, he was on the phone, calling everyone he knew inside and outside the country. Four hours later, 5 a.m. local time, he called me back to say that everything was arranged. Ambassador, do you never sleep? I asked. The answer, obviously, no. Not when there was work to be done and lives to be saved. That was Richard Holbrook. With his remarkable 11th hour diplomacy, how he took the Security Council to Africa and how he put AIDS on its agenda. And every Richard loved this house. His father brought him here when it was just a dream and a construction site. And the young boy was dazzled by the promise of such a house on the East River rising so soon after the end of war. A decade ago, Richard and I spent two years here, and I think it was his happiest time. Power must be used very carefully. Now, at this point, if Richard were here, he would be signaling me from the audience, speed it up or slow it down. Or typically, I would see him leaning into his neighbor, you all know that Holbrook move, whispering behind his hand, prompting me to issue a stern reprimand from the podium. Oh, we had so much fun. He, lo <clears throat> he loved his country but not in any chest-thumping way. He felt that America had a big role and a big responsibility toward the rest of the world.